has been great and fully prepared. The, the first step of the procedure will be to put Jalokin anesthesia. For this purpose, we use uh, 6 ml of 2% Jalokin which will be injected in the midline rafe and then use about 12 ml of 1% Jalokin which will be injected 6 ml in one cord and 6 ml in the another cord. So let's first inject 2% Jalokin in the midline rafe. This is this midline rafe. First put in a needle here. And as you inject, you will see raising a wheel. Raising a wheel. So this injection is essentially interdermal and partly subdermal. Advanced in the dermal plane and also in subdermal plane. The part of a jarocane will go in the septal area. So about an area of the inch and a half is injected with jalocaine. So this is the area that we injected. Now I'd like you to have a look at the rugosity of the scrotal skin on either side of the rafe. Now as the jalocaine effect will appear, you will notice that this rugosity of the skin in the area of the rafe will disappear. And this will area will look like little more blanched out. Okay. That when this gets blanched out and rafi, the, the rugosity are not seen, this means that the effect of jalocaine has come. We will now inject 6 ml jalocaine in the spermatic cord for cord block on the left side. We will ask assistant to pull the testis downward and with the thumb and the index finger, I am behind the spermatic cord. This is the spermatic cord, so I, I need to go behind the spermatic cord. And then the first puncture is made vertically, upright down, like this, aspirate, inject in the midline. Then change the direction, aspirate, inject while you withdraw. In this direction, aspirate and inject. Now it is necessary that the, the cord is put to stretch. It is necessary that the assistant stretches the testis down. This stretching maneuver stretches the cremaster fascia and the muscle. So the, the cord gets elongated and the drug that you inject will diffuse downwards towards the testis and upwards towards the external inguinal ring. So this stretch on the spermatic fascia is necessary. After you have infiltrated the drug, this permitted cord needs to be massaged like this, two, three times. By the feel of the massage, you will know that the drug is there in this permitted cord or not. You will feel the structures of the cord will slip under your uh, palpating thumb and the fingertip. They become very slippery. The same thing we will do on the other side, on the other side, same thing, the stretch the testis down, feel for the cord and same maneuver here also, trick on the right side, the tip is felt between the index finger and the thumb, aspirate, inject when you come back, on the other side, aspirate, inject as you withdraw. On the other side, aspirate, inject as you withdraw. Now this is very important that you keep aspirating in between. You must ensure that the drug is not injected intravenously. There are lots of pamniform plexus in the somatic cord and if you have intravascular escape of the drug, then patient can have uh, problems. We massage both permitted cords. Both permitted cords 
should be massaged thoroughly. You have to wait for nearly two minutes for the effect to come. Now, I'd like you to have a look again at the area of the infiltration in the median effect. I hope you can see now the patch that has been anesthetized is from here, from here till here. And you can appreciate the change in the appearance of the skin. So now we move on and we start to give the incision. The testis is brought under the raffae, first on the left side. This is the, this is the raffae, okay, black line. We will give incision on the area which has been infiltrated with jalocaine. There will be some bleeding because of the jalocaine effect. The vessels get dilated. So, the subdermal vessels will bleed a bit. With the left hand, you maintain the pressure this pressure on the distress like this we will soon see the sac the, the, the junior general sac one may cut the sac or may not cut the sac then you press it and the testis will deliver out as you would deliver this testis outside, the fibers of the uh, dartos muscle will come along with the testis. So you can retract them with the help of the sponge. These are the fibers of the dartos. Retract them with the help of the sponge. Same thing on the other side. It is important that you retract these fibers like this. The fibers need to be retracted. These are the fibers of the dartos which have come along with the cord. Okay. That's how this test is delivered out. So from all sides of the fermented cord, retract the fibers of the dartos properly. So this is the knot test is delivered out with this fermented cord attachment. This with the hemostat forcep, push it in between to divide this into two halves, equal halves, like this. And you open these blades to separate. Now this permitted cord is divided into two halves. You can see like this. You can see like this, divided into two halves. And ask the assistant to put the clamp, put it in. Put it in uh, on the other side. Okay, good. And then when you cut, cut about one half centimeter distal to the clamp that you put. Don't cut flush. Cut one centimeter distal. I will tell you why this is needed. Cut, cut about one centimeter distal to the clamp that you put. And this is the test is removed. With the scissors, separate these two, make them independent. Okay. So the spermatic cord pedicle is not divided into two equal halves. Up. This needle should be penetrated about a centimeter below. Not flush with the clamp, but a centimeter below the clamp here and take it out on the other side. Loop. Then you pull the suture. More. And then reinsert the needle. See, nearly the same track. When you pull this, this is the one loop that is coming along. Let this loop settle here. And you take this one on the other side. I hope you can see the figure of 8 kind of arrangement that has been made like this this is the figure of 8 arrangement that has been made nearly 1 cm below the level of the clamp and then you tighten it 
briefly hold. Tighten this. While you are tightening the suture, you ask the assistant to release the clamp a little bit so that to allow the tissues. Tighten this well. Okay. Now what you do again? This is one throw of figure of eight. You will now apply another throw of figure of eight. Now this time you just go below the clamp. Go below the clamp, come out in the middle, take it out. You throw this again in the same location. You can see one loop of it here, it tightens and the other side is here. Can you see these two loops of the eight? One there and one here. And these loops you tighten. This figure of eight is tightened just below the clamp. So there are two figure of eight transfixing sutures to secure the cord. Cut one. Okay. We will do the same manual of ligating the cord, this is a mass ligation of the cord, same thing we will do here, one centimeter below the clamp, go in, come out, come out, go in again, make one loop of eight here, do it on the other side, there are two loops of eight, one loop, one loop, figure of eight. Tighten this. Ask the assistant to release the clamp a little bit. Now that's the reason you cut tissue one centimeter distal to the clamp because if assistant is releasing the clamp, the tissue may not slip down. If you have sufficient tissue here and assistant is re releasing the clamp to permit you to occlude the tissues properly, then if you get enough tissue here, it will not retract, right? So you tighten this figure of eight. one figure of eight stitch and one more time this time as I did on the other side the needle will come just below the clamp it will come just below the clamp go again just below the clamp Tighten this. Okay. So there are two figure of eight stitches on both halves. Now there are two independent cord ligatures. You see that they are not bleeding, right? They are not bleeding, they are fine. Now you can let them go in, but it is a good idea to put a hold and see let them go whether they are going in or not. When you let them go in, when they relax, see that the relaxed ends are not bleeding. Sometimes it happens that when you pull them out under tension of the stretch, the cut ends don't bleed. When you relax the cut ends, let them go in, they start bleeding. So to ensure you have these sutures, pull them out again, examine for any bleeding, there is no bleeding, you can let them go in. So this side is done. Now we have the other side. Other side of the testis is made prominent like this. And I will make an incision again. This kind of incision again. That I am pushing, I am squeezing. Uh, the I am showing you on the other side. You can cut the parietal layer of trinca vaginalis also. Uh, in some patients, when they are adhesion, the delivery of testis becomes easy. You do like this, look at this, the testis is delivered from inside the tunica. This becomes slightly easy. Spine please. On this side also, you will separate the fibers of the dartos like this. Let them go back. 
this side also let them go back and this is the cord delivered out so we'll do the same maneuver again this one here now pull that out also pull that out also this one is there and then this is the septum in between this is the septum in between so you're gone on either side now what i like to do i usually take and tie them together this forms a kind of a knot here distal to the ligature subsequently tissue becomes like a knot and patient can feel this knot as a residual testis cut this suture loosely tighten them no need to be very hard on it just approximate the ends and cut okay both ends have gone in this is the septum that you can pull out this is the septum so you have made an incision on the raphe and you have gone transseptally on either side and you done the job effectively push this in properly now if you have not separated the dartos fibers from this spermatic cord in the beginning these cut ends will not retract they continue to be in the wound now we will close hold it we will put some darto layer first give it one bite here one bite here and one bite here the continuous running suture suture this back before you finally close you should squeeze the scrotum for trapping up of the air in the scrotal sac what what i like to do is hold the thallus press it from behind to the top end by squeezing this some air will come out and you will also see if there is any blood collection that will come out to this by squeezing maneuver so do this couple of times it's all fine you can proceed further so we are closing the septum back a uh, mind you that these skin edges will bleed because uh, you have infiltrated jalocaine here which causes some kind of vasodilatation so you have to tightly occlude these edges and i therefore prefer uh, giving a subcuticular stitch the subcuticular stitch is good using the absorbable monocryl this is good for edge approximation the bleeding is also less not oh, more the wound is nicely closed the other advantage of the absorbable subcuticular is that you need not call the patient for suture removal this will get dissolved on its own so you take care that the parietal closure is also good don't let it be bleeding briskly here if there is a bleeder please take care after this is done the this wound will be dressed by a ablusive dressing compressive dressing that is a very important part of this operation a good dressing compressive dressing you can tighten this with the uh, initial subcutaneous stitch that you had this way, this way the knot will also go down now i like you to have a look at the closure and the incision the incision was in the raphe and you have closed it completely it's a cosmetically well concealed uh, uh, scar subsequently and patient would not even come to know what is happening so the, at the end of it the scrotum and area should be feeling very soft no bleeding no hematoma inside wound nicely closed and you have to dress it now with the compression dressing the patient is given a compressive dressing which is a dinaplast divided in form of a edge secured at the buttocks and also the down wall like this these specimens of both the testes removed out